Why ACE inhibitors cause cough? ACE is the abbreviation of angiotensin converting enzyme. This class of medications are used for several indications and they are hypertension, left ventricular systolic dysfunction, acute myocardial infarction in patients who are at high risk of cardiovascular events, in diabetes mellitus and renal failure, and in scleroderma renal crisis. To understand why ACE inhibitors can cause dry cough, let us first understand some of the background. Angiotensinogen, which is primarily produced in the liver, is cleaved by renin to angiotensin 1, and then angiotensin 1 is converted to angiotensin 2 by the ACE. And that's why when ACE is inhibited, angiotensin 2 production is decreased. On the other hand, ACE cleaves bradykinin into inactive peptides. Same goes for substance P. So when the ACE inhibitor is administered, it will block cleavage of both bradykinin and substance P. Inhibition of angiotensin II production will enhance natriuresis and thus lead to lower blood pressure. And inhibition of the degradation of bradykinin has beneficial antihypertensive and protective effects. On the other hand, the increase in bradykinin and substance P levels will lead to the induction of dry cough. In general, ACE inhibitors are well tolerated. However, 5-20% to of patients can suffer from cough. The incidence of dry cough in patients receiving ACE inhibitors vary among individual ACE inhibitors and is the lowest with perindopril. The onset of ACE inhibitor induced cough ranges from within hours of the first dose to months after the initiation of therapy. Resolution typically occurs within 1 to 4 weeks after the cessation of therapy, but cough may stay for up to 3 months. So, how bradykinin and substance P induce the dry cough? Although the exact mechanism of ACE inhibitor-induced cough remains unclear, several theories have been postulated for cough development. Accumulation of bradykinin and substance P in the upper and lower respiratory tracts by ACE inhibitors is the most widely accepted theory. Bradykinin induces sensitization of airway sensory nerves via rapidly adapting stretch receptors and C-fiber receptors that releases neurokinin A and substance P. This causes the airway smooth muscle to constrict, leading to bronchoconstriction and cough. However, the reason why cough does not occur in all patients receiving ACE inhibitors still warrants further research. Another method describes how cough is induced by bradykinin is the transient potential receptors. Several types of TPR ion channels have been described on airway sensory nerves and may be activated by various mediators and physical factors, resulting in cough. TRPV1, previously called the vanilloid receptor, is activated by capsaicin and bradykinin, all of which are potent to sieve agents. So, in case of cough development, how do we manage it? Once the patient reports an incidence of cough, we should try to assess if it's mild or moderate to severe. So if it's mild, we should watch for worsening or disappearance of cough for 2 to 3 weeks and not directly to discontinue the ACE inhibitor. So if remission of cough occurred, reintroduce the current ACE inhibitor treatment. But if the cough worsens, we should switch to alternative option, which is the angiotensin receptor blocker or ARB. We can also add agents that suppress cough like iron supplements, thromboxane antagonist and calcium channel blockers. If the cough persists, we should switch to ARB or ARNI as indicated. If the cessation of ACE inhibitor is not an option and other drugs are contraindicated, we should reintroduce the current ACE inhibitor and add the medication to suppress the cough. Before ending this video, I want to mention two interesting studies where 27.4% of patients had spontaneous resolving of cough where they didn't take any cough suppressants and ACE inhibitors were not discontinued and the scientists followed up after 13 months after cough disappearance and there were no recurrences. The other study had more than 50% of patients developing complete remission of symptoms despite continuing with ACE inhibitor treatment. So for sure additional studies are required and the methods should be focusing more on the continuation of ACE inhibitor and monitoring the development of cough in patients. After doing such studies we can derive better recommendations. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.